Okay, so in this video, we're going to follow on from my previous video introducing what acceleration is, and we're going to look at the effects of positive acceleration and negative acceleration so we can see what that really means. So we're going to start off with a few questions to see if you can remember the key things from the previous um, video lessons that we've done. So grab yourself a scrap piece of paper, pause the video now and have a crack at these three questions you can see here. And you can see I've given you some clues for the keywords that I'm looking for in the answers here. Okay, so I'm going to assume you've had a chance to have a crack at those. So let's start off with average acceleration. So average acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time taken for that change to occur. So um, you can see the keywords I'm looking for are these ones here. Um, so the thing that people often miss here, which is why they go wrong with acceleration, is they miss out the fact that acceleration is the change in velocity. So let's move on to what acceleration is. So first off, what is it short for? So uh, it's short for instantaneous acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, which we could also express as the gradient of a velocity versus time graph there. And again, so these are the key things I'm looking for. The fact is the rate of change of velocity or the gradient of a velocity versus time graph. And then final question, what actually is velocity? We've talked about it quite a lot in the two videos. So again, it is short for instantaneous velocity is the rate of change of displacement, displacement or the gradient of a displacement versus time graph. Okay, and again, these are the key things we're looking for in our uh, responses here. Okay, so that's a little background on what we've met before. Uh, let's press straight into looking at the effect of positive and negative acceleration. So let's take a step back for a second and talk about what it means if we assign a vector quantity a positive number or a negative number. So this is something we do when we're solving problems in physics. And we use the positive or negative sign to indicate the direction of a vector quantity. So um, some conventions that we typically use, but you don't have to use if you don't want to, is typically if we're dealing with situations where something is acting upwards or to the right, we'll often call it a positive number. And if it's acting downwards and to the left, we will call them a negative number. So, for example, if we have an object traveling to the right at 20 meters per second, we can express the velocity as plus 20 meters per second. And the plus sign is what gives the direction. Likewise, if it's going downwards at 10 meters per second, we could write the velocity as minus 10 meters per second. And an object is traveling left at 2 meters per second, we could write that as velocity is minus 2 meters per second. Um, if an object is traveling in any direction that's, that doesn't fit with this, so maybe it's going diagonally upward to the right, we don't use positive or negative signs anymore typically. We will give the angle of the vector to a given direction instead. So maybe we'd say 30 degrees to the vertical or something like that. Um, but so this allows us to deal with situations where it's just going up or down or just going left and right, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, let's talk specifically about positive and ne negative acceleration. Um, so we can't really answer what positive or ne negative acceleration means until we know what the object was doing before the acceleration started. So what I've done is I've created uh, four different scenarios here where we have um, different velocities and different accelerations and the impact of that acceleration on the velocity. And I should specify at this point that this is the impact immediately after the acceleration. If you wait a long enough period of time, something else can end up happening. So look at scenario number one, where we have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration. So what does that mean? Well, maybe we have an object, it's going in this direction, and it also experiences an acceleration in 
this direction as well. Uh, that's what scenario one might look like. It could also be in the upward direction as well. Uh, that would equally work. So we could have acceleration in that direction and the object itself is going in that direction there. And the effect of that will be the magnitude or the size of the velocity is going to increase because of that acceleration. If we look at scenario two, we've got positive velocity still, so we're still going to be drawing our velocity arrows like this, but we've got negative acceleration. So in this first diagram, that would look like this. In the second diagram, that would look like this. And the effect of that will be that the velocity magnitude or size is going to decrease. If we look at scenario three, we it says we've got negative velocity, so that could mean velocity to the left it could mean velocity downwards, but it tells us we've got positive acceleration. So that would be acceleration that way, and we'll have uh, acceleration that way. And what will the effect be of that? It will make the velocity magnitude decrease again. And then finally, looking at scenario number four, we've got negative velocity, which would mean it's either going to the left or it's going down. And it says we've got negative acceleration as well, and you can see that's going to make the velocity magnitude, uh, I don't know why that says decrease, uh, that makes the velocity magnitude increase in that situation there. So can we come up with some general rules to this? Well, yes, I think we can. So in the two scenarios where they were in the same direction, so either they were both positive or both negative, you'll note that the velocity magnitude increased. So that's a good general rule to add there. And we can see that if the acceleration and velocity are in opposite directions, the velocity magnitude decreases. So again, we can maybe we can draw out a general rule there. So um, I will flag up at this point is there is a scenario where some of these answers are actually incorrect. So in theory, uh, aren't the one for number two, and number three, we could argue that the two things you've written there aren't totally true. And um, so I'll challenge you to see if you can come up with an explanation for uh, when that is the case. Um, but it's a good rule of thumb to have in your head. Um, and like 90% of the time this does work, but uh, you may be able to think of a scenario where that statement there isn't true. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples where so we can actually see this in action numerically. So let's say we have an object with an initial velocity 10 meters per second to the right. So uh, let's sketch that. So it's going at 10 meters per second that way. And so we'll give that a positive number. And it's an acceleration of two meters per second squared, again, to the right. So it's got an acceleration in this direction of 2.0 meters per second squared, in which, so we're also gonna assign that a positive number in there. Okay. And it's, that happens for five seconds. So what's going to happen to the magnitude of the velocity? OK, so I'm going to be using my um, average acceleration equation. So the average acceleration is the final speed minus the initial speed over the time taken for that change to occur. And as long as this acceleration is constant the whole time, uh, this should give us the correct answer. And we want to figure, figure out what this V is in here. So the first thing I'll do is multiply uh, both sides by the time, like this. And then I'm going to um, add U to both sides. So we've got the initial velocity was plus 10. The acceleration was plus 2.0, which acted for 5.0 seconds. Uh, so two times five is 10. So that's gonna give you plus 20 meters per second. And so what does this plus in here mean? It's 20 meters per second to the right. The positive sign is giving us our direction there. Um, so, um, you can see here, I think I actually answered these questions the wrong way around. So we're supposed to say, first of all, what would happen to the velocity? So let's just grab that um, and put it in the right place. And we can actually use the rules we came up with earlier to actually predict what's going to happen. So that's actually our calculation. So we've got that the uh, velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction 
so we expect the magnitude of the uh, velocity to increase over time. So that was the general rule we came up with earlier. And you can see from our calculation, we have been able to show that, yes, that's true. We've gone from 10 to 20. So we followed our general rule, which is fairly good. Uh, let's see an example where we have um, one is positive and one is negative. So you can see here we've got initial velocity of five meters per second upwards. Um, so we'd be assigning that a um, positive number in there uh, in terms of following our working out. So we've got uh, plus 5.0 meters per second, an acceleration downwards like this of 10 uh, meters per second squared. So maybe that's being caused by gravity. So we can apply our general rule to predict what's going to happen. So acceleration is in the opposite direction to velocity. So we would expect that the mag magnitude of the uh, velocity would uh, decrease over time. So some of you have, may have realized this earlier, but actually if we apply this acceleration for long enough, we can turn the velocity negative and get to a point where its magnitude gets bigger than five. So if we apply this acceleration for a very, very long period of time, we could in theory end up with a larger magnitude, but um, that's not what's going on in this case uh, to keep things simple. So let's actually go through and do that calculation. So we know that the average acceleration final velocity minus initial velocity over time. So let's first of all multiply across by time. Then we want to add u to both sides. And so our initial velocity was plus 5. Our uh, acceleration is downwards. So remember, we will be writing minus uh, 10, and our time was 2 seconds. So it's going to be plus 5.0 minus 20. So you can see that's equal to minus 15 meters per second. So we've actually managed to get to a point where we've actually broken this rule here because we had this acceleration for long enough. We've actually managed to achieve a larger magnitude of velocity, um, but in the um, negative direction. And in this case, the negative direction means downwards. So the comment I want to put at the end is if acceleration and velocity are in the opposite direction, the magnitude of the uh, velocity will initially decrease. Um, but if the acceleration is applied long enough, the uh, magnitude can eventually start to increase there. Um, so we need to change our rules slightly to be a bit more careful. OK, so um, we've reached the point where I'd like you to have a go at some questions on your own to see how well you have picked up the key ideas in here. Um, so what I like to do is be very similar to some of the ones we've looked at. So I'd like you to first tell me what a positive negative sign indicates about a vector quantity. And then what I'd like you to do is predict what you'd expect to happen to the um, velocity of an object and then actually calculate it to see if your prediction is correct. Okay, so pause that and have a go on your scrap piece of paper, then we'll talk about the solutions. Okay, so now you've had a chance to have a go. So, po so the uh, positive negative sign indicates the direction of a vector sometimes. Uh, so uh, positive means upwards or to the right. And then negative means uh, downwards or to the left there. OK, so if an object is traveling at 12 meters second to the right and experiences a acceleration of three meters per second squared to the left. So let's uh, so we've got plus 12 meters per second. 
and our acceleration, however, is uh, minus three meters per second squared. What would you expect to have happen to the magnitude of the velocity? So initially, the magnitude will uh, decrease, and then unless it uh, experiences the acceleration for a long time, in which case it might increase there. So that's kind of what we're expecting to see. Uh, so let's see whether that's happened in this case. So as, as we've seen before, we know how to calculate our acceleration. We need our change in velocity over time. And let's uh, jump straight to our final step here. So we can do u plus, it's not plus in here, absolute nonsense, just multiply by t. So our initial velocity is 12 and it's plus 12. And we need to minus three, and we do it for two seconds. So it's gonna be 12 minus six, which gives us plus six meters per second. So what does the plus mean? Well, it means it's going at six meters per second to the right there. Okay, so that's what we mean when we talk about positive and negative signs with vectors and also more specifically with acceleration. And we've given ourselves some general rules to bear in mind when we're handling acceleration there. So in the next video, what I'm going to start to look at is, well, what if the acceleration is in a completely different direction to the velocity? So I'm not talking about being the opposite direction. What if the acceleration is at 90 degrees for the velocity? What is it? What if it's at some other angle? Um, so that's what I'm going to take a look at in the next video.